Hi, it's Tammy, NZ Gastric Slave, coming to you with my week 24 post-op update. Um, also coming to you Naked November. Um, so, yeah, this um, video is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to do my normal weekly update, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the conference that I went to on the weekend. Um, so this week, um, so I had vertical sleeve gastrectomy at Wellington Regional Hospital with specialist Mr. Simon Ban on the 21st of May 2014. Um, my highest ever weight was 120 kilos or 264 pounds. Um, the starting of the, the, the um, public system um, list was 113.7 kilos or 250.7 pounds. Um, started my pre-op diet, I was 108.9 kilos or 240 pounds. Day of surgery, I was 103.9 kilos or 229 pounds. Last week, I, I came to you weighing 79.7 kilos or 175.7 pounds. And this week, um, it was I um, was seventy eight point eight kilos or one hundred and seventy three point seven pounds. So the loss for the week is nine hundred grams or two hundred pounds. Um, now I was just doing some calculations and that um, means that my loss from surgery is twenty five point one kilos or fifty five point three pounds. My loss since I started the pre op diet was. 30.1 kilos or 66.3 pounds so that's six months six months since I started the pre-op diet um, and um, so my highest ever it's 41.2 kilos or 90.3 pounds um, from my highest so um, I haven't done an update like that on my kind of totals so just thought that would be a good opportunity um, so this week has been pretty um, regular. I was away for most of the week. Um, I left to go down to Invercargill on Thursday. It was my dad's um, 65th birthday, so qualifies for super. So that was a pretty pretty big for him. Um, and so I went down to surprise him. He didn't know I was coming. It just so happened that also at the same time, um, there was a weight loss surgery um, New Zealand Trust Conference, so the na the national uh, conference that was on in Invercargill at the same time. So that was really, really handy and quite a coincidence. Um, so I went down on the Thursday, surprised him, um, stayed Thursday and most of Friday with him and then went back into Invercargill because my parents are actually in Matara, which is just out of Invercargill. Um, so... The conference. So Friday night was a meet and greet. It was Halloween, so there was a Halloween themed party kind of thing. Um, I went along. There was probably about six or seven people there when I arrived. Um, in total, there was probably only about thirty people. Um, so it wasn't a huge conference. It wasn't a huge gathering, but um, it was really good to kind of see what New Zealand has to offer. Um, as other than Peaks, I haven't really connected with um, any New Zealanders um, in this kind of process. So that was kind of cool to actually talk to people in the flesh about some of their experiences. Um, most of the people that were there were bypass. Um, I think there was two, maybe three other sleeves um, there. Um, the interesting thing is even though I was public and others that were there were also public, um, that the, um, it was, um, they don't have the same operation in all the different areas. So, um, yeah, that's quite interesting and I, yeah, I found that quite different. Um, so on the said day, um, there was the conference and then there was the dinner. So um, the conference um, was pretty much all day. Um, they had the the, weight, uh, the New Zealand Weight Loss Surgery New Zealand Trust, which is the 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 trust that organised the conference. Um, they had some really good goodie bags with um, a lot of great weight loss friendly products in it. Um, so that was kind of cool. Um, 
I'm lucky I took a couple of bags of clothes down for the clothes swap because I had a couple of big bags of goodie bags to bring back. Um, so um, that was and it, that was kind of good. Um, so the goodie bags. Then um, there was a number of speakers throughout the day. I will talk a little bit about um, at least a couple of the speakers. So um, basically what it really ended up is the dietitian, the surgeon and the psychologist from the South the Southern DHB program um, were speakers. So we had Renee Ladbrook, who's the dietitian. Now, what I found quite interesting about hers, and it was it was quite, probably quite fortuitous that I'd just seen my dietitian that Wednesday because I had, I suppose, a little bit of a, um, I suppose, reference point on what the discussions that I just recently had with her. So some of the interesting pointers that she had. Sorry, it's a bit cold here. Um, um, most of the interesting things that she had to say were around vitamins and supplements. Um, now, my dietitian had only told me that week that the standard for the supplements had gone from one centrum a day to two centrum a day. Um, and Renee was really talking about the fact that um, if you change over to the Celebrate um, bariatric um, multivitamin you only need one a day because of the levels in it um, so I actually was on the celebrate chewables when I actually had surgery um, and then I went on to the centrum because that's what my program were recommending um, but by comparison if I go back onto the celebrate it would be cheaper I went off the celebrate because it was quite expensive um, but if I'm having to have two of the centrum a day then that's more, more expensive. So um, that was quite interesting to kind of see about that. And she also had some information around different tests and especially vitamin tests that um, need to be tested throughout the time. Now, I'm due my six-month bloods. I'll probably get them done mid to late next week. Um, so... Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what my levels are. My last lot of tests, I was low in my iron. Um, so it'll be interesting to see whether I've been taking enough of that. Or however, one of the things that she said was the over-the-counter irons are not going to be a high enough dosage. And I was coming to the end of my iron tablets and I actually looked at the, at the um, container this morning and they're only 20 milligrams. So actually I'm probably getting more iron from my multivitamins than I am from those extra supplements. So I need to have a bit of a wee think about how I'm going to get that in. The other thing that she said and my dietitian had both said was around the calcium. So initially I wasn't um, put on any calcium supplements. I was actually taking them at surgery and my dietitian told me to stop them because at the time I was having a lot of dairy. Um, I was having a lot of yogurts and cheese, cheese was my snacks, um, where I'm not having quite so much of that now. So um, they're concerned about my calcium and certainly if I was to get pregnant, as I mean in another six months time I will probably start trying, um, that she said probably at nine months I need to definitely make sure that I'm getting enough calcium because that will become a problem. Um, so so yeah, that was that was really interesting. Um, now the surgeon for this for the Southland program, Mark, Dr. Mark, um, Mr. Mark Smith, um, was the next speaker. He kind of really talked about um, the different procedures. He talked a lot about bypass because probably about 75-80% of the participants in the room were bypass. Um, so I'm just going to put my light on. I think I just gave away my secret. Um, uh, uh, so yeah, he talked a lot about um, bypass and actually talked a lot about what are the complications or the issues that come up post-surgery that cause weight regain. So um, a lot of the participants that were um, there were a lot further out than what I am. I'm only five and a half months. So um, 
a lot were a lot further out than what I am so um, there was definitely kind of regained concerns within the room so that was quite interesting to talk about especially with the bypass what the um, I suppose surgical issues or complications that can cause you to start regaining after a period of time with with bypass so um, that was quite interesting um, we then also had um, a participant, uh, well a participant, a patient, a, a weight loss surgery patient um, who is actually, um, he's either an anesthesiologist or an operative nurse who also works at Southland Hospital um, and he has a weight loss surgery patient um, so he talked about it from the point of view of kind of where he'd been along his journey and where he was now um, and he went from quite an overweight man that was very unhappy to um, being very much into a cycling um, and and doing quite well in those distance kind of races. Um, in the afternoon we had Mike Prouting who is the psychologist on the Southland program and um, he was talking a little bit about relationships so he got us working in um, groups so he got us we had to organize ourselves and age without speaking and then we had to get into kind of age groups so um, I was in the 30s age, age group and um, each group had to kind of talk about the different components I suppose the different decades of your life and what sort of relationships were important and how things have changed over time and really that was quite interesting to kind of see how actually this journey or the surgery can heighten some of those relationship changes and actually that probably would have happened eventually anyway but it I suppose matures you in that experience as far as if it was good it'll still be good afterwards if it if there were cracks then it's probably going to expose those cracks um, and it would have happened anyway but it might have taken five years to happen instead of five months so um, that was quite interesting it, the, the actual synopsis of that about relationships I knew but it was good to kind of experience in that um, sort of environment um, and that took us to the end of the actual conference and it's um, I suppose speaking since we were running quite a wee way behind for most of um, the conference we got quite behind in the first couple of speakers so um, we were kind of trying to catch up um, so what actually happened is there was meant to be a quiz after lunch um, and that actually got moved to the dinner which I think was actually a better option because um, it made the night really really interesting so that ended just before five um, and then we had to be back um, at the hotel for half past six for pre-dinner drinks um, and dinner started at about seven so basically we're in um, this little private dining area um, at the hotel and basically we were seated in groups of four and as each group of four came in they'd order and so there was a the lunch was pretty much a build your own salad there was some wraps um, and some cruskets there as options for for carbs but it was pretty much um, chicken and ham um, all the salad ingredients that you wanted um, so and it was well sized for post-op patients um, the dinner was choice of roast of the day chicken or fish um, and then there was fruit with yogurt for dessert um, when they came out I thought oh my god that's a huge portion apparently there were half sized portions and of course in New Zealand which I suppose is we probably don't have as big a portions as, as, as America but um, we still have reasonable size portions so their half portion was a whole chicken breast now most weight loss surgery patients can't eat a whole chicken breast um, so that was quite interesting this the fish was probably the only one that was a perfect size portion it was probably a hundred gram kind of fish blue cod and the ham roast there was a lot on that so um, that was kind of interesting. The hotel had obviously been given instructions for weight loss surgery patients, but um, 
maybe not quite realizing how little we eat. So that that was interesting. Um, having, I mean, at my table, I had someone that was four years out, someone that was a year out, and someone that was a couple of years out. So um, we all ate different kind of sides portions. So that was kind of good. Um, I also felt that we kind of drawed together the same people throughout it. So I probably didn't get to know some um, other people at the conference as well as I would have liked um, and so but um, certainly the ladies at my table were really good and so we had dinner um, we then had a speaker so we had Tanya Roxborough come and speak now she is an author um, she's also a teacher um, and she's got a book called Fat Like Me um, I bought a book bought a signed copy for ten dollars score um, and so I haven't read that yet, but it's her memoirs of her first year postdoc. Um, now I know that she was quite concerned about coming to speak at the conference because she had suffered some regain from when she was at, at her best, but I think that really adds to the fact that it's a lifelong struggle. You don't, you're never cured from obesity. Um, and I think post-op we probably as much as anyone need to I suppose do the work to maintain the loss I mean the, the surgery may help make it easier to lose the weight initially but if you don't put that work in then you're not going to be able to maintain it so I mean it's all I think it swings and roundabouts I think I probably watch what I eat more than when I was on my kind of seesaw diets because I would go a few months dieting and then a few months of just not doing anything um we are now it's it's more of a constant kind of struggle um i know i'm up to 16 minutes this might be a little bit of a long one but i really wanted to kind of get a full rundown of the conference so we had tanya come and speak and so that was really that was really cool that she was a really good speaker um and it was great hearing from people that had had experiences um then we had a quiz, which was really cool, our table one. So another lot of goodie bags. Um, so that was kind of cool. Um, one thing that I missed out of the conference. So one of the first speakers of the kind of testimonials was this girl who was probably in her early to mid-20s. She has had issues with her hips um, to the point where she's actually shattered her hips um, as a teenager um, and now she needs another hip operation but they won't do it unless she loses weight. Um, she's been declined four times on the public system. Um, now as someone that has received their surgery on the public system I felt, um, I felt really bad because I was like, I felt her need was more than mine, but at the same time I had to reflect on my health issues and why I was selected for the surgery. So I can't say because we're in a different DHB, there's different criteria, different scorings. Like I know the Hutt Valley is more stricter than say Wellington or Auckland, but then so each, each area is a little bit different. Um, so she was kind of talking about her struggle and her fundraising attempts to um, raise funds to pay for her surgery. Um, so there was a raffle on the day and all proceeds went to her and her kind of fundraising attempts. Um, I tell you, when she was speaking, there was not a dry iron in the house. Um, it was really emotional. Um, I, the conference was awesome. Um, I will definitely go next year. Apparently, it's in Auckland, so that'll be kind of cool. Um, and probably regretting even more so not making it to the um, Wonder Sleeves Down Under. So, I mean, it's it's good to kind of get to know people in the flesh, if, if you like. Um and so yeah so I just wanted to kind of give people a bit of a rundown I'm going to link this um, video on the um, New Zealand weight loss surgery support page so um, it can be seen by people that may um, have not attended the conference but wanted to kind of see what was going on um, 
and yeah so I will leave it there and see you again later bye